Hello guys, once again it's Matt and yeah, happy Monday. Uh, so we have the confirmation that it will not be another uh, dev server this week or even in general probably not another dev server. So we probably will be seeing the patch very very soon. My guess is at the earliest uh, tomorrow, but probably like on Thursday or even Wednesday, something like that. Uh, but we don't know, so just to confirm that. Uh, and yeah, let's uh, start the video. So let's thank our members first. Commander Frosty, Lafush, Igor, Yuyush, Justin Field, Jaff, Astro Pub, and Silami. Thank you for being the Foxball member. Thank you, Overlane 11B, for being the, the full crew member and all the Fishman members as well. Thank you. It helps a lot. Make sure to be a member if you want to help the channel. Join our Discord. Subscribe. 70% of the views that I got in the last 30 days were not subscribed so 70% is a big number so make sure to subscribe the more subscribers we have the more uh, the large <laughs> a larger amount of people will be uh, shown the video in the algo algorithm <laughs> so yeah but let's start the video so today we're going to talk a little bit about the su25 late uh, so it is not confirmed that it is coming but yet but uh, some people were just asking what are the changes or what it does work or what is it, you know. Um, because normally we see a lot of talks about the Su-25T, a lot of talks about the Su-25TM. And I did a video, I think it was last week, about uh, it having it a different, a different uh, engine, you know, the R195, which has like 12 kilonewtons more than the normal R95SH, but there is many many other uh, improvements to the aircraft. It is a 1986 upgrade for the Su-25, the original one, so it still doesn't have TV guided stuff or anything like that. It is just it is just the normal Su-25 that we are already going to have in game, but with some upgrades from the experience gained from uh, at, at, on Afghanistan. You know, a lot of the aircraft that the Russians flew. Uh, the Soviets flew on the Afghanistan actually got upgraded after the the war or during the war. Uh, you can see the Mi-24 having multiple upgrades uh, between the years that were being used on Afghanistan. Uh, they even uh, put it new engineers there to just on the ground after the pilots just landed from a mission. They would would ask the pilot what it was or as on a certain system or something like that they would pass on uh, just like it is in formula one which is funny uh, they would pass on to the factory and they would develop a different model for that or anything like that you know any modification smaller or bigger uh, modification it would be passed to the factory and they would make it another uh, upgrade to it so it is pretty interesting and pretty good it is a very uh, good way to actually have to ensure that everything is modern and being uh, modernized as we speak in during a war you know so yeah it's pretty pretty good model uh, so yeah but there are many many upgrades i think there are let me count 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, so 15 uh, modifications that they did, a major, you know, and uh, this information was provided in the forum by uh, Epke Blitzkrieg, which is a, an amazing guy that always uh, have these informations about Russians aircraft, Russian aircraft and Soviet aircraft especially, so it is pretty interesting and pretty good, uh, the guy has a lot of our own uh, posts about uh, a lot of different Soviet aircraft, so pretty cool. Uh, and the information normally is correct, so yeah. Uh, but first of all, let's talk about uh, all these modifications. So the air brakes on the wingtips were increased from 1.2 meters uh, squared uh, to 1.8, so we had a more advanced and a better air brake on the wingtips, which makes it better to have more time. Uh, to do the ground attacking, so pretty interesting. Uh, the li the leading e edge slats were extended to a form of a dog tooth, so the basically the the slats were extended and 
they were upgraded to a dog to design which we have in the mig-23 for example i think but many many aircraft have that uh, older aircraft as well so yeah it's a mix it so that you can pull more aoa and more g's which is always a good thing you know in a turn fight or something like that uh, reinforced wing elements to enable a higher g limit uh, so it was basically more uh, strengthening net you know uh, the, the weight of the uh, the wing elements the, the spars and stuff like that so we could pull more g's uh, vortex generators on the wing tips to on the wing tip air brake fairing so basically uh, making it a better airflow on the vortex generators normally are used on the on the top of the wing to actually make the uh, i don't know what's called in english that but we call it like uh, the limit layer of the air we call it in portuguese i don't know what is it called in in, in english but it is just basically the the air that is actually providing lift when it's touching the wing so once you actually put a vortex generator you can actually maintain it the the air energize it going downwards you know uh, in a centrif centrifugal way you can actually make it so that it has a, a downwards uh, kind of um, uh, energy you know and with that it maintains the air going uh, through the top part of the wing and with that you have a lower stall speed basically so yeah wings um, vortex generators are pretty amazing and yeah they do tend to produce a little bit more drag but they are a bit better than not having it um, the wings center sections panels were strengthened so more strengthening on the on the on the um, on the structure of the aircraft which which is always nice Anti-glare shields mounted on the wingtips, air brake fairings in board of landing lights, uh, in board of the landing lights. So anti-glare, I mean, probably some kind of uh, some kind of um, way to just um, lower the glare of the the landing light. Probably something like that. Uh, two more chaff and flares dispensers on the engine nacelles, which also prompted them to change the brake chute design, so they had more chaff and flares. The cannon's attachment points were strengthened, and the fuselage area as well for that purpose, so the gun would be more stable, you know, it's a common thing done by um, more used aircraft. Uh, rear fuselage area reinforced, obviously. Redesigned tail section providing better aerodynamics uh, so i don't know what exactly this means but if the tail is better better aerodynamics uh, fire extinguishers added uh, the front fuselage and the sides of the rear fuselage sections were given additional armor plates so more armor to the aircraft uh, and improved r 195 engines with less heat signature and also it provides more power to the aircraft so pretty good and especially with these extra armor and strengthen it uh, wings and spars and stuff like that you would uh, have problems with weight um, but yeah pretty interesting uh, higher range uh, mostly by the better drop tanks introduced you know so it has a, a higher range technically uh, R828 VHF, uh, VHF radio added so this doesn't matter much for the game fire protection coating elements added to the engine nacelles and rear fuselage so basically what it means is this is the last one uh, basically what it means is the aircraft is more um, structurally strengthened uh, in the fuselage in the tail section in the wings uh, it has more armor on the fuselage which is always nice the inside of the wings part so the spars and stuff like that are better better air brakes uh, better aerodynamics in general on the tail and with the addition of tor vortex generators and especially the better engine with fire extinguishers and uh, the um, better fuel uh, better flares more chaff and flares i mean uh, so in general it is just the same aircraft it has the same armament the same everything but it's just a tiny bit better uh, probably you would have like 310 kind of um, flares and chaff 
uh, or yeah probably because it would use 30 and 30 so 60 more countermeasures probably something like that and yeah basically this is it uh, it is an aircraft that I think to be honest I, I kind of I, I mean I doubt that they will do it but I kind of think that I have this this I'm not thinking that they might just add the late variant as the normal tech 3 variant because uh, then it's a different thing from the premium one and it would be better so that would make sense you know and it would be nice to have the Su-25K as the early version of the Su-25 and then the normal one being the late variant with more stuff so yeah pretty cool the most uh, excited thing about this variant if it's added is actually the engine for me because uh, the 15 extra 10 to 15 kilonewtons will help a lot this aircraft is already fast it's a fast aircraft already for a an attacker and it's going to be even faster and it's going to be even better carrying weight so yeah basically this is it for the video a pretty cool uh, interesting model let me know in the comments if you think this variant is coming instead of the normal uh, Su-25 because I really doubt that they will add two Tech-3 variants but let me know in the comments if you think that's going to happen as well. I think uh, the best idea was to be the late variant for the tech tree, the early variant K for the premium, and then we can add a T, a TM, maybe a SM or SM3 in the future as well. So yeah, but basically this is it. And I hope you enjoyed and I see you guys on the next one. I'm going to be trying to make two videos a day, uh, but I don't know if I can, I just wanted to try because the numbers are pretty good in the channel and I really want to keep going you know uh, I really need this to, to work so uh, the more I work it uh, the better uh, even though I get tired a little bit but if I get tired I will take it down a little bit as well uh, so don't you worry okay <laughs> so I see you guys on the next one and thank you we are almost hitting 4500 subscribers so yeah make sure to subscribe and bye guys see ya